All right, so we've talked a little bit about relations, and so now let's move into functions. What actually changes a relation to being a function? Okay. Recall, a relation is just any old set of ordered pairs. Okay, again, any set of ordered pairs. Whereas a function is a relation such that each x is mapped to only one y. All right. So I'm going to say it one more time, and you're going to hear me say it a bunch of times throughout this, this uh, lecture. A function is a relation such that each x is mapped to only one y. So an x can only go to one y. All right, so let's go through a few examples of whether these are relations or functions. All right, is this a function? Well, yes it is. All right, each x goes to exactly one y. All right, as you can see, 1 goes to 2, negative 2 goes to 4, and 3 goes to negative 1. All right, so again, each x to exactly 1y. All right, what about g? Is this a function? All right, I see 1 go to 1, 1 go to 2, 1 go to 3. So 1 in the first component gets mapped to 1, 2, and 3. Thus, it is not a function. Okay, so again, so you can see it with the arrows, one is going to three different outputs, okay? All right, what about h? Is this going to be a function? All right, a lot of times students go, oh wait, one is repeated. One is a y component, right? It's, in this, it's a second component. When I look at the first components, I see negative four, negative three, and negative two. None of those are repeated, and so this is a function. All right, because each x goes to exactly one y. Again, it doesn't matter that the y value is repeated. All right, what about this? Is this a function? Yes, it is. All right, it is a function because every x goes to exactly one y. All right, what, so in a situation like this, what is something that's not a function going to look like? Here's an example. Do you notice how we have two arrows going from four? Four goes to five and four goes to negative five. So this is not a function. All right, you guys remember the vertical line test? This is a way we can also look at functions when, when we have a graph, okay? And so with the vertical line test, if we draw a vertical line, it can only intersect the graph once. If our vertical line touches our graph twice, three times, 15 times, not a function. All right, so let me grab my pen here. All right, so you can see here with a simple relation or something that's not a function, I draw a line and I touch my graph in two places, not a function. Whereas for the function, for every vertical line that I draw, I'm only touching my graph in one place. All right, let's look at some examples. Is this a function? Draw a vertical line, and I can see that I'm touching the graph or the circle in two places, and so this fails the vertical line test, not a function. All right, what about this parabola? Draw a vertical line, touch the graph in only one place, and so, yes, this is a function, all right? And, and you guys, I can draw a vertical line anywhere. I can draw a vertical line here. Still, I'm only touching in one place. Draw it here, only touching one place, okay? All right, let's talk about domain and range in terms of functions, all right? The domain is the set of all independent variables or inputs, all right? And that's a great way to remember it, okay? independent variable is the input all right and you'll notice this is a neat little trick independent variable is the input and domain ends in in all right and so the trick there independent variable input domain the set of all values of the dependent variable is the range also known as the output all right so let's find the domain and range all right, we've already looked at some of these with relations, but let's go through a few more. Practice makes for perfect. All right, the domain, as we know, is the first components. 
All right, and so I have a three, a four, and a six. The range, all right, those are the y components or the second components. I have negative one, two, five, and eight. Now, is this a function? When you look at these four ordered pairs, do you think it's a function or simply a relation? And the key here is four goes to two and four goes to five. And so it is not a function because four is going to two different y values. All right, what about here? All right, our domain is four, six, seven, and negative three. Our range is 100, 200, and 300. Is this a function? Yes, it is, because every x goes to exactly one y. Again, it does not matter that 200 is repeated. All right, is this, what's our domain here? Negative 5, 0, and 5 are x components. All right, our range is 2. Now note, I'm only listing the 2. I don't list 2, 2, 2. Okay, and then is this a function? Sure it is, all right, because each x goes to exactly one y. It doesn't matter that they all go to 2. All right, what is our domain and range for this graph? All right, notice that the x values are, include all numbers between negative 4 and 4, all right? In other words, I'm using all of these x values to draw my graph, all right? Similarly, I'm using Let's grab a different color. I'm using all of these y values right here to draw my graph. All right, and so my domain is negative four to four, and my range is also negative four to four. Now, let me take a moment and tell you guys, I often see it's very easy to list the domain as negative four to four because our eyes read left to right. But a lot of times for the range, you guys want to list it as four to negative four. And some of you have heard my quirky little way to remember this is it's kind of like what Pitbull says at the beginning of his song. He takes it, took his life from negative to positive. Same way with math, all right? Negative to positive. So negative four to four is our range. And then note, I'm using brackets on both because the circle is actually going through each of these negative fours and fours. They are part of my domain and range. They are included. All right, what about the domain and range for this graph? All right, the line extends indefinitely. All right, there's arrows here. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that I can get any x. If I go over here, all right, to say, let's say negative 6, then somewhere way up here is going to be a data point, all right? What about the range? Well, the range, let me grab another color here. I can't get below negative three. I have everything up here, but I can't get below negative three. All right, and so the way we write, I can't get below negative three, is bracket negative three to infinity. Okay, and again, note the bracket because that is the, the minimum or the valley of that parabola.